Hi guys, my name is Varro Dante, and this is the first part of my two-part review of XPPAN Innovator 16. In this video, I'm gonna unbox it, plug it in, check it out, and share my first impressions. I did get this tablet for free for review purposes, but it's in no way a paid promotion or anything. And I also made sure that you guys are the first ones to see this video. So these are gonna be my raw impressions with no interference. Now, I know I recently said that I didn't want to make any reviews of tablets anymore, but this one looks really cool. So when XPPAN contacted me, I said yes. So this is a drawing display, by the way, the kind of drawing tablet that you connect to your computer and it works as a display and as a drawing input device. It's a 16 inch display and a battery free pen with tilt support. So finally, the full package of features from non Wacom manufacturer. I'm also really excited about having a close look at the display because it says on the website that this is a laminated display, which means there is an incredibly tiny parallax on this one. Almost no distance between the tip of the pan and the actual pixels. So you're painting colors with no empty space in between. All right, so here's the tablet. One of its cool things that this is a sexy one. So it's incredibly slim. It's less than one centimeter thick. So let's put it aside for a moment. What else do we have here? A brick, an American brick, that's interesting. An adapter for a European power supply. Uh, so many weird ones, but they got you covered apparently. So next we have a separate stand. As far as I remember, it's a pretty basic one, meaning, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the angle you get. Honestly, it's a bit higher than I expected. Maybe it's actually gonna work pretty well. A nice napkin to wipe the whole thing. The display, I mean. Okay, so we have two white boxes and a little black cylinder. So I suppose there is a pen in this one. All right. Oh, it's pretty light. It has no eraser, but it does have two buttons on the side. That's nice. I'm not missing the eraser. Oh. An intuitive interface. I immediately realized this is a pen holder, I suppose, with a rubber surface. Okay, what are you hiding in here? Eight nibs. So, eight replacement nibs. Cool. I wonder where should I put this when I'm just using the pen on the table? <laughs> oh, it also has a rubber surface in here. There's a lot of rubber on this. Okay, so what's in these boxes? I assume some cables and maybe manuals. Uh, a USB extension cord. And this thing. This is the main all-in-one cable. Three-in-one to be precise. So this tiny L-shaped Type-C cable is going into the tablet. And on the other end, we have two USBs Type-A. One for power and one for data and an HDMI cable right here. Now, this is my biggest concern in terms of quality. I did a review of another tablet before, another drawing display just like this one. It's from a different brand, so I almost shouldn't even mention it, but it was the same kind of drawing. Oh, cool, so we have a glove right here. So yeah, it was also a drawing display just like this one in terms of the size of the display. I ended up only being able to use it as just a display because the USB part of that complex 3-in-1 cable broke and now it can only connect using HDMI. And there's no way to replace it because where do you find a cable like that? So that's one thing. Let's just hope these ones are higher quality these days and well, I think it's a good idea to take a good care of your unique three-in-one cable because your device really depends on it. All right, so some manuals I threw away, no one cares. A stand, a pen, and the device. Let's get it out of this. Oh, okay, it, it was supposed to be taken out like this, I guess. Okay, a big note. It's a protective film. 
Okay, cool. So there's a sticker that says step two. Please peel off the film and ready to go. Where's step one though? So I do know that there are two surfaces stuck to this display. So one of them is this protective film that is just for the shipment or whatever. So you peel it off. Okay, it's a bit scarier than I thought it would be. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, and the second surface that is being revealed now is the actual working surface and it's sort of like removable as well maybe replaceable so this is a laminated display with a matte surface anti-glare whatever all right that's a pretty solid thing in the hands some kind of rubbery surfaces on the sides or is it plastic that just feels a bit grippy this looks like metal but Oh yeah, it's cold. It is indeed metal. So this backside, absolutely empty. You can't mount it on any kind of other stands or something. Only this kind of mobile stands. There's actually a lot of this kind of stands online. You can purchase those. So, so far I'm pretty happy with the build. It's very sturdy for its thickness, that's for sure. Like it doesn't bend almost at all, although it does a little bit, but no sounds or anything. So it has this really cool ring. Inside the black surface is like a virtual ring, the touch ring. And on the outer side, the silver thing is a mechanical ring. So it spins around rather freely. Also, the buttons are maybe the best ones I've seen so far. They have different sizes. The closest ones to the ring are bigger and the other three are smaller and they have these very distinctive bumps like every other button has a bump. That's pretty cool. You can easily navigate on them without having to look at them. On the side we have I believe this is some kind of thing just to hang it or something. This is a type C plug, power button, and uh, I hope this is not volume buttons. I think this is supposed to be brightness buttons. Well, yeah, it, it shouldn't have volume buttons, right? It doesn't have a jack or anything like that. The tablet sits very well inside of the stand, but the stand slides around a bit. Even though all the contact points are very rubbery. Oh, one of the rubber things fell out. Let me put them in. All right, this is a bit better. Still uh, slides a little bit on my plasticky table. On this sharp surface I have in here, the green one, it grasps a bit better. Honestly, it doesn't matter at all because the angle of the stand is very low. So you're mostly pressing downwards, not forward. Anyway, I'm gonna plug this thing in, install drivers, and uh, we'll check it out in action. All right, here we go. So I plugged everything in, downloaded drivers on Innovator 16 web page. You go to driver and you download the version you need. Also supports Linux. Okay, the pressure works. Right away as I turned on the display, the pixel grid the visible black spaces between pixels is moderate. It's a full HD resolution on a 16 inch display. So even for working this closely to the display, it looks fine. It looks okay. It's not an iPad that has much higher pixel density. So you don't see any of the pixel grid and the whole thing looks like one solid surface. In here you see it a little bit, but generally I think I'm gonna be totally fine with that. About colors, out of the box, I haven't touched anything about the settings. I can see a green tint on everything, so I'm gonna have to uh, tweak settings a bit for it. I hope there are things for that. There's display settings, that's something new. 6500, isn't that... Yeah, this looks a bit more appropriate, I guess. Also, it's kind of dim, but I haven't tried the brightness buttons. Oh yeah, it's only 50%, that's nice. All right, I guess I'm gonna be using it at 100. <laughs> Especially when I'm recording, because lights are pretty bright. I think I need to calibrate the pen though, because I can feel how the cursor is a bit lower than where I'm placing my pen tip. Oh yeah, another good thing about this display. 
it's not a touch display in Windows devices. It's a really good thing, I think, that you're you're not afraid to touch it at all and only the pen actually does anything. Okay, so I'm spinning the wheel. It says control minus control plus or control equal. <laughs> and the touch ring goes scroll up and scroll down. Let's check it out. Well, yeah, with Windows Ink, scrolling isn't really a thing. It's kind of weird. I'm just swiping downwards, but sometimes it recognizes it as... Oh, it's a spinning wheel. Even though it's a touch thing, I see. Well, then it's okay. That's why it's called a virtual wheel, I guess. Even though they show it as up, down, left, right, it actually works as a spinning thing. Maybe also something else can be set up with that. No, apparently it's just the spinning thing, right and left. Not sure how this is supposed to work, though. A lot of functions and uh, which one is going to work when. Let's quickly check out a couple of painting apps and that'll be it, I guess. A nice grip with the pen. Uh, this whole dark surface is a nice, like, sanded, sandy kind of rubber. Really feels nice. And it's a bit slimmer than all the Wacom pens, which is also kind of good. I didn't paint this right now, by the way. I was just testing brushes some time ago. I really like how the cursor is very precise at the very edges of the screen. I remember on my Wacom Cintiq Companion 2, there's a problem when you get to the edges and you're trying to press a button. As your pen gets closer, the cursor kind of swims away. There's some kind of problem with the positioning of the cursor close to the edges and not a problem here. Although I do remember there's a thing, even though the pen supports tilt, this tilt doesn't work one inch away from the edges of the screen. Let's see if that's true. So here it is uh, working just fine. Yeah, it's true. Like here it is reacting and as I move pretty big distance it is an inch and it stops tilting well that's not very nice if you're using tilt yeah it doesn't update the shape and then it switches well this is not good i wouldn't recommend buying this drawing display if you really want to use tilt like it has tilt but i don't know one inch away from the edge of the display it's a pretty big distance this is not such a big display like the top the right side the left side that's where usually the interface is so you won't even be drawing there but the bottom edge that's where that one inch is kind of a problem aside from that i don't see any issues at all let me quickly do the ruler test Well, I am guess I'm seeing a little bit of wiggle, but it's like microscopic. I'm not sure if there are any tablets that don't have it at all. So I'm gonna say this is really, really good or something. Let's check it out on Photoshop. Okay, and here it's a bit of a different zoom. I wonder if I can switch between modes quickly using the ring itself or what aha uh -huh, so the bottom key the very bottom one is switching modes of the rings that's what it is yeah by the way the sensitivity of the pressure and stuff like that feels just right out of the box all oh, right photoshop requires ink well i mean these days in windows 10 you can totally work with ink pretty much always. It doesn't seem to be a problem anymore. Okay, so I'm scrolling with the touch ring like this and changing the brush size with the physical ring. It seems to be quite easy to just use the mechanical ring without accidentally triggering the touch ring, even though I'm like touching it a lot. So yeah, um, the buttons are fine. I'm going to use my keyboard. <laughs> so yeah, the tablet is positioned like a mobile thing in a way that you can unplug it quickly, take it with you to work and plug it in there. But you kind of get only one of these three in one cables. So it's not that light of a thing to just unplug and go to work. You also need to collect your cable with you as well, I guess. <laughs> 
I really like the responsiveness or um, the lack of lag. I just noticed it. It's super, super fast. Like my Wacom Companion 2 is a pretty old drawing display, but it definitely had a much worse response time or whatever. What is it called? A lag, right? A much worse lag. In here, it almost completely feels like iPad, really. There is no lag at all. It's immediate. Well, maybe iPad is a little bit better, but this is so close. Thing is, iPad uses predictable strokes, which is something I know about because I develop a drawing app for iPad. Literally, they use, I don't know, AI prediction. And of course, on Windows, with all kinds of different hardware or whatever, this is not Apple, where software and hardware is developed by the same people. So in here, there's no such thing as predictable strokes or something. So I guess with raw performance, it's probably the same as Apple Pencil, because it's really good. This thing and the distance, oh man, it's just so close to the tip. Really good. Such such nice clarity on the screen. It's not super bright, this is 100%, and, well, I mean, don't use it in the sun. Indoors, it's totally fine. It's also anti-glare, so it's a really good clarity. Like, the pixels are sharp and clear, the colors are vibrant, the distance from the pan is so minimal, and the responsiveness, the lack of any lag of the stroke, this thing is really pleasant to work with. Let's check Paintstorm Studio. The last thing I'll check, this thing is using OpenGL extensively, so the performance in it is like pure 60 FPS all the time. Hey, what's up with this, though? The stroke starts very late. I haven't noticed that in other apps. Why is it happening here? I'm gonna go back to Photoshop because this is a bit creepy, really. Like, it doesn't react to very slight touch. In here, it's like really strong. There's no way I just haven't noticed it in other apps. It's something about Painstorm Studio. There is no problem at all with that. Cancel the alert. So it's just something about Paintstorm Studio and its weird support of different tablets, I guess. Okay, now as I'm testing the slight touch, it actually does have that, but it's a lot less intense than what I felt like in Paintstorm Studio. A little bit like you can touch the display without it registering the actual contact of the pen, but it is really minimal. We'll see if I'll have a problem with that. I promise to be super honest about it, because this is like a thing, like it is, like it's not perfect. This thing is definitely um, a downside of this pen or the tablet. The tilt not working one inch away from the edge is one thing, Thing. It's not a lot of people use tilt, although it's pretty messy if you ask me. But yeah, the pressure response, this light pressure response, is very essential. It is close to perfect, but I do see how sometimes the stroke is shorter than what I would expect. Hmm. Well, yeah, like, if I'm intentionally doing a super slight stroke, it gets, you see, sometimes even splits the stroke and there is nothing in between here and then registers a little bit. So, yeah, it does have a problem like that. But I don't even know if I ever really draw like that. So I only noticed it when I started investigating because of this horrible problem in Paintstorm Studio. I wonder Windows Ink, maybe, if I turn it off. Well, there you go, it's gone. <laughs> the problem is gone. These, These days, days in Windows, Windows 10, 10, you can totally, totally work, work with, with ink, ink pretty, pretty much, much always. always. One thing I find to be an issue here, though, is that I don't see profiles for software still. I remember I mentioned it last time I reviewed another drawing tablet from XP Pen, and I talked about it, and they haven't changed it at all since then. There are no profiles for different software. For instance, in Photoshop, if you want to use pressure sensitivity and everything, you need to turn on Windows Ink. And here we have Paintstorm Studio that has some horrible 
glitch or bug or whatever that makes the stroke start very late every time. So you need to turn off Windows Ink and it immediately becomes fine. As I'm trying the tilt right now, I think I notice like a pretty significant lag in tilt as well. So if I quickly rotate the pen, it doesn't realize it's rotated until it's too late. Like I, you see the positioning right here is like this and in here it's like this. Well, it was like this in here already. So I was rotating it somewhat like this and it showed this rotation a lot later. I'm going to try another app for that because who knows, maybe it's Paints from Studio acting up again. All right, Windows Inc. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's the same thing in here. It's the tilt reacts a lot later. So yeah, I'm doubling down on the thing that you shouldn't buy this drawing display for its tilt, and that's for sure. Okay, so there we go. This is what I have to say about it for now. The basic performance of the pen is close to perfect, but the tilt, let's call tilt not essential, the tilt is not good at all. This is the first Chinese brand of a drawing display or just a pen tablet that has tilt at all. Before that, not a single one had tilt. So this is like a new thing. And I guess for the price is just a little thing to try, but it's, I don't think the tilt is good enough for real work. It's pretty bad. I don't know, maybe the delay is not that big of a deal. Usually you just position the pen at the necessary angle and just make a stroke, you know? But I remember a lot of the times I want to make like this kind of movement where I start with a sharp stroke and then I widen it by tilting the flat brush. And in here, it's just, I just rotated it and it remains just a line. So that's pretty bad. So yeah, if you're not into tilt and you're not into drawing by barely touching the screen or something, if you really rely on that, maybe look at something else. But other than that, it's pretty good. Um, it's really hard to give a verdict on this, like the verdict of first impressions, but I don't think this kind of stuff is gonna change. It's only about whether it really bothers me when I really work for the next two weeks. So we're gonna have to find out later. Also, I think it's really good for sculpting and working in 3D apps in general. So yeah, this is it. Tell me guys what you think. Ask me questions to answer in the two weeks later review. And I'll see you then and also a week before in the next video. Bye. Man, this is kind of hard. The display is just so good. Well, I mean, for, for its size and resolution, but it's, it's just right. Such a convenient thing with such a good display is gonna be one hell of a testing.